Choosing a monitor can be a really important part about planning a computer or upgrading a current one. So let's go through it together. Hey, what's up everybody? Dimitri of Kata Gaming here. And today we're gonna go over the important things to know when trying to plan out for your monitor and how your monitor choice can actually determine what kind of hardware you need in your computer. So there are a few basic things you need to decide when choosing a monitor. So the first thing you want to determine is size. Size is going to depend on the amount of space you have on your desk, your viewing preferences, the distance that you'll be sitting from your monitors, and a few other things. The two most common sizes are 24 and 27 inches, although you'll see more and more 30 plus inch size monitors coming out as 4K monitors become more popular. Now, speaking of 4K, the next thing you're going to want to decide is your resolution. Now, I personally like to lean on the screen size to kind of determine what kind of resolutions you run. For example, 24 inches and 1080p is a perfect pairing. And in my opinion, 1440p and 27 inches are a great pairing. And the reason for that is that 24 inches, anything above 1080p is going to be really hard to determine because the pixel density on a monitor that size once you go higher it's a diminishing returns kind of situation and the same thing at 27 inches once you go above 1440p linus actually did a really cool video on 1440p versus 4k and how few people can actually notice the difference on a 27 inch monitor because the pixel density now once you go 30 inches and above if you're going for a standard 16 by 9 ratio 4k becomes a much better option now one other thing that can help determine your resolution is the purpose if you're going to be doing mainly gaming what i just mentioned is probably going to be the best for you but if you're doing a lot of productivity uh, if you're editing a lot of spreadsheets if you're editing 4k footage for example maybe 4k will be a better solution for you because the more pixels on the screen the more stuff that you can fit on the same screen so for me going from a 1080p to a 1440p monitor for example with excel spreadsheets for work huge difference you get a lot more columns a lot more rows 4k you're basically quadrupling that and you can get a lot more stuff on a singular screen now next up your refresh rate now for refresh rates 60 hertz is the most common that you'll have on you know most standard monitors but if you're gaming a lot of people will say that having a higher refresh rate as long as your computer can push those frames makes a much bigger difference than the resolution and the reason for that is the smoothness that that higher resolution does for me and for a lot of other people going back to a lower refresh rate is really jarring and it really makes a big difference so as i mentioned 60 hertz is the most common and the usual bottom line for monitors nowadays. Next up, you get to 120 and then 144 Hertz. And then you go all the way up to, some monitors can overclock to like 155, 160 Hertz. Then you go up to 240 Hertz. And then above that, you go to 360 Hertz. Now, 1080p will have the most refresh rates available to it because of that lower resolution. They're able to push those panels a lot harder and have that higher refresh rates. As of right now, most of the affordable 360 hertz monitors are in the 1080p resolution. Once you go up to 1440p, 144 hertz is usually the sweet spot and most of the mainstream monitors are around this refresh rate, although 240 hertz and 360 hertz monitors are coming out for that. And at 4K, before having a high refresh rate wasn't was the trade-off that you got for having the higher resolution but recently more high refresh rate monitors are coming out for 4k so if you did want to do 4k gaming the high refresh rates are becoming more available and as time goes on those will become even more so and once you start getting into hdmi 2.1 monitors we'll be able to push higher and higher frames now one more main thing to consider is the purpose of the monitor so if your main purpose is going to be for gaming then color accuracy may not be the biggest focus point 
of your monitor. But if you're doing a lot of video or photo editing, color accuracy can be extremely important and you're gonna to wanna to take that into consideration when looking at monitors. Artings is a really great resource for looking at monitors, their color accuracy, their refresh rate, their overall usability, quality assurance, all that kind of stuff. It's a great website. I use it for almost all my panels, so TVs and monitors. Highly suggest that I'll leave a link in the video description below, but try to search your monitor uh, that you're looking at, search it in Artings, look at how they've rated it, look at the color accuracy charts for IPS panels, which we'll go over in a second, the different types of panels, but with IPS panels, the amount of Light bleed that can happen can be pretty jarring, so Artings goes over that as well. Really great resource. You'll hear me say in the past a lot, but in the past, IPS panels were usually the best for color accuracy and having the best image quality, but you lost out on the quick response time and high refresh rates. Now recently, that has become much less apparent and the best panels coming out now are all IPS, high refresh rates, really quick response times. So that's kind of a thing of the past. Before TN panels were the way to go if you wanted a really quick high refresh monitor um, for a reasonable price. I, the IPS ones were extremely expensive and they usually didn't have the greatest response time. So first up you have IPS panels which have the best image quality and you used to give up a lot on the refresh rate that's not as big of an issue anymore but you are going to be paying a little bit more than for say a tn panel where they're usually cheaper they have really good high refresh rates but the viewing angles and the color accuracy usually suffers a little bit and then you have va panels which traditionally have had the best black levels of all the panels uh, but they do not have the greatest color accuracy and they're typically only being really used, I think, as far as I know, in a lot of the ultra-wides. Um, IPS is really taking over across the market because it's becoming easier for them to be manufactured and they're becoming cheaper. So IPS will be the ones that you'll see the most. And most people will aim for an IPS monitor as of 2020, 2021. So what do I suggest? As of February, 2021, I would suggest getting a 24 inch 1080p 240 hertz monitor or a 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz monitor. Depending Again, depending on your viewing distance and the amount of room you got on your desk, personally for me, the perfect resolution and refresh rate right now, 1440p 144 hertz, it's what I play games on. I really enjoy my monitor, although I might at some point upgrade it to a IPS panel. I have a Dell TN panel right now, and I really do love it. It is an incredible monitor. I really enjoy it. But I do feel like that 1440p, 144 hertz is the perfect sweet spot for gaming. Um, if I was doing a lot more FPS, then I would probably go for a higher refresh rate. If I was doing a lot more productivity work, then I might go for a higher resolution but this is perfect for me. My two side monitors are 1440p 60 hertz panels because I don't play any games or anything on them, so I didn't want to have to pay the extra uh, cost for that higher refresh rate. They work fantastic and they're also really great panels, but they're IPS. And the reason I made sure that they were IPS is because I'm not, when I'm looking at my main monitor here and I have my side monitors, I'm not typically looking at them directly. And as I mentioned, TN and VA panels don't have the greatest viewing angles compared to IPS, but IPS does. So having them on the sides and on angles, uh, I don't really get any kind of distortion or color loss from looking at an angle. So it worked out perfectly for me. But I'm curious as to what kind of monitors everybody's running, what kind of monitors people are looking to get. So leave some comments in the description below and let me know. Now, if you liked this video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. It really helps me out. As I mentioned, we're really aiming for those 1,000 subscribers by the summer. We're really close to getting there, and I really hope that we can do that together. If you have any comments or questions, again, you can leave them in the comment section below. 
any kind of feedback. Uh, again, what kind of monitors you guys are running. I'd love to hear from you guys. Leave comments in the section below. Again, that also helps out my videos. So I really do appreciate those as well. If you want to have a little bit more of a discussion, you can go ahead and join the Discord. I'll leave a link in the video description below. We can have a little bit more of a back and forth. It's a lot easier to do that than in the comment section of the YouTube videos. I will be posting a list of recommended monitors and I'll try to keep it up to date as much as I can over time. It is really difficult because monitors are coming out constantly and this year especially I have a good feeling that a lot of the HDMI 2.1 monitors are going to be coming out because of the new consoles. So keep an eye on that and I'll try to keep something updated. And as always I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and say hello. You can ask me questions in the chat there and I'll answer them as quick as I can. Thanks again for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate you guys all very much. Stay safe out there and I'll see you next Friday.